Vice President uh, Kamala Harris rolling out her economic agenda. Let's bring in our panel. Stephen Moore, uh, Trump economic advisor and the Heritage uh, Foundation, Foundation senior visiting fellow. And Lindsay Owens, groundwork uh, collaborative executive uh, director. I, I'll start with you, Steve, because it, it, unfortunately, both sides have sort of some whataboutism. And I, I hear tariffs. We know tariffs probably aren't great. And yet both sides think that there's certain... Uh, times when there's dumping or whatever, where, where it's the only choice that a country has is to actually do tariffs. So you can actually have hardcore um, Austrian economics uh, advocates that, that will say maybe it's okay. I'm hearing the same thing about certain price controls now. In your view, are they always bad? Because that I, I'm an absolutist there. I think that there's shortages and and... It, it, we, econ 101, we know how prices are set. That's from supply and demand. And it's just a fool's errand to try to do price controls. Well, you're exactly right about that. And, and I think what's, look, I, you called it Economics 100, and you're right. And, and unfortunately, a major uh, presidential candidate uh, has endorsed uh, an idea that, that would flunk Economics 100. Almost every economist would agree, I think all of us would agree, that price controls have have never worked. They certainly were a complete failure in the 1970s when we had major uh, inflation that hit 11, 12 percent, and the government couldn't get rid of it. But I think what's really frightening to me is that you've got Kamala Harris now and all her economic advisors who are endorsing uh, an economically dingbat idea, uh, and this really calls into question. It would be like having a football coach who doesn't know anything about the forward pass. I mean, come on, this is basic economics. And what worries me as well is the whole kind of premise of the uh, Kamala Harris um, agenda is sock it to businesses, that businesses are bad, profits are bad. We have to limit the prices that they're charging. Well, come on, look, this is an investor show. Without profits, you don't have businesses. Without businesses, you don't have jobs. Uh, this is just a, a real assault on the whole free enterprise system, and it's troubling that you have a major presidential candidate that would endorse these things. I'm going to get to you in a second, Lindsay, but it just, I, I was saying about what we heard about eggs today. I, th there are, it just seems like, Steve, you could sell it to, to people, to the public, by saying the pandemic was a, a sort of a, a one off, and there were things that were happening that would allow companies to game the system and, and keep prices high. Right now, um, there's avian flu. So you could see how companies would say, wow, this is my opportunity to raise prices. But in my view, whatever is the extraneous factor, whatever does it, you're still going to dislocate normal supply and demand by, by putting price controls on and you're going to end up with shortages, no matter what. But are there times yeah. when you could do it? Is, it a, is there a way of where it's not a bad policy to institute price controls when there's something allowing companies to game the system. Yeah, what's especially dangerous about the idea is she's talking about grocery stores and 7-Elevens. I mean, if you actually have, uh, you'll put grocery stores out of business. As, as you know, they only right. have two or three percent margins. So you put price controls, they'll go out of business. And people will actually have, you know, not have access to food, which is a dangerous situation. The question, of course, is why they would endorse something so idiotic. Well, because and I think it the, sells, I think. Let me get to Lindsay. Lindsay, and that's what everybody's I, telling me today, is that people uh, want people. something done. People, Lindsay, people I, want something done. Uh, and this, this look... Hold on. Let me get to... Let me get to Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, um, it, 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 is it... Is that... There's something to that? That it looks like they're taking some action and they don't, they're not really serious about uh, taking it too far with, with uh, price controls? Look, I listened to the vice president's speech on Friday, and what I heard is someone who's laser focused on lowering costs for American families, particularly the costs that matter most, the cost of a roof over your head and food on the table. And she laid out a couple of proposals. Uh, the first thing she said she was going to do is crack down on price fixing by companies like RealPage. This is the data software company that lets corporate landlords collude on rent prices. She said they're not going to be able to do that anymore under my administration. The second thing she said is she's going to do a new federal price gouging ban on food and grocery. This is not price controls. Forty states have price gouging laws on the books. 
these are red states, these are blue states. This is Idaho, this is Texas, this is Louisiana. Donald Trump did price gouging laws. He used the executive authority he had under the Defense Production Act to crack down on price gouging of medical supplies during the pandemic. So this is a common sense set of policies. Um, we need a new ban at the federal level on the books. Um, but the reason that she's proposing something like this is because it works. She successfully prosecuted cheaters after wildfires in California. Um, we just saw Calmain, the nation's largest egg producer, uh, was convicted at a jury trial of price gouging. Um, you know, bird flu is a great example. Um, it is ridiculous if your business model is to wait around for the bird flu and really gouge consumers to rake in record profits. Um, by the way, this isn't about bringing supply back online. Um, at the jury trial, what we found out about Calamain is that they were fanning the flames of this supply shortage, exacerbating it. They were culling the flock. Uh, they were exporting the eggs to keep the shortage going here at home in the United States. So I think Harris is exactly right to be taking this on. And by the way, if you're a company who relies on ripping off consumers, um, you know, you want to be taking a close look at your business model because this really doesn't speak well of you.